What is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be going over several mistakes that could be losing you games in Fortnite Chapter 5. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more, and comment down below which mistake you've been making that has been costing you games most in Fortnite Chapter 5. So, a lot of the things in this video I may have talked about in other videos on more like specific topics, but not everybody watches 100% of every video, so there will be things I talk about here that I've talked about in past videos. So just keep that in mind if you watch all of my videos, you know? Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be snipers because they're a huge part of the chapter 5 meta and it's the first time in a long time where snipers are like this important in Fortnite. So I feel like a lot of players kind of have some bad habits that you could make when snipers weren't meta that you may need to stop making and the first is going to be peeking the same angle over and over again like if you're having a mid-range fight with ARs you could often peek from a similar angle several times over and it wouldn't be the biggest deal in the world because it wasn't just like in an instant your game was going to be over if you made a mistake but with snipers the penalty for making any mistake is potentially higher so you have to keep that in mind even if they don't headshot you just hitting a body shot on you can really mess up your game so if you are in a like fight with somebody even if you don't know if they have a sniper, just try not to peek the same angles over and over again. Try to mix up which angles you're peeking from. And also you want to be using right shoulder peaks as much as possible. Whether it's mid, mid range, long range, close range, it doesn't matter. Peeking from the right of cover is very ideal because you don't have to expose as much of your character to actually peek. And so you're going to be able to get shots off faster. If you're peeking into a sniper and you're peeking from the left and they're peeking from the right, it's going to be a fight that's heavily in their favor. So try not to peek the same angle over and over again. Try to peek from the right as much as possible and just try not to be predictable in all aspects of the game. But those mid-range stalemates uh, are much more punishing this season. Also, I kind of just touched on this a second ago, but I think a big mistake a lot of players are making is that they don't assume that people have snipers. I think it's best to just assume every mid-range fight you get in this season is versus a player that's using a sniper because... Like I already said, the penalty for any mistake is very high. So if you peek into somebody thinking they have an AR and then they have a sniper, it could cost you your game. Even if there's not sniper glint, uh, this is just something you need to keep in mind because to my knowledge, only the 4X scope has glint. I talked about this in a recent video I made about the snipers and a lot of people were telling me the 2X has glint. To my knowledge, it doesn't. I tested it uh, a while ago and I'll have that video linked in the description below where I talked about the sniper glint and showed myself, you know, aiming with a 2x weapon, dropping it to another player in a custom and then having them look at me. There was no glint and Epic has been on break pretty much the entire time since that video was posted. So I don't think as anything has changed there. So whether you see glint or not, whether you see them use it or not, assume a lot of players have a sniper and don't get too lazy with your peaks and hopefully you'll be losing the snipers less in mid-range fights. I think a lot of players kind of overly peak or, you know, peak for too long because they think that the person doesn't have a sniper and then they maybe get in 100 damage with their AR and, and then that sniper hits one shot and they're back to the lobby. Another huge mistake a lot of players are making this season, and this is going to be as a result of like the meta, I think, is that the auto shotgun is also really good this season. And we've kind of had like this come and go where like some seasons the pump is better, some seasons the high fire rated shotgun is better. And when the higher fire rate shotgun is better, a lot of players just like 50 50 a lot of fights. And what I be my, mean by that is they'll just like jump on somebody, neither player will have cover, and then they'll just spam out auto shotgun shots. And then they also won't have any like early damage or anything like that. It's like two full HP players kind of standing out in the open, just trading shots with the auto shotgun. That is not ideal. That type of fight is really not likely to go your way. And a lot of us make these mistakes, like everything I talk about in this video i've lost two before but just jumping on people with no early damage or with no cover using the auto shotgun is a very random fight you might win it and that might be great for you but you're also likely to take damage by doing this and then that leaves you more vulnerable to third parties and the the, the reload speed of the auto shotgun is quite slow so if you don't have that speed mag attachment that's also going to be a problem if you're going to be using the auto shotgun and jumping on people, try to at least first get opening damage or have like some sort of cover in the fight, whether it's your vehicle, trees, rocks, whatever. You just don't want to have fights where you and somebody else are basically barrel stuffing each other with the auto shotgun or, you know, there's no cover involved at all because you could easily win that fight despite being better than the other player. And even if you do win it, you're likely going to take a good amount of damage and that is going to leave you vulnerable to third parties. And we all know how problematic third parties are in you know, Fortnite. Another mistake a lot of players are going to be making is not using cars. And I think this is a big one for this season. The SUV or the G-Wagon car, I don't know what it like Fortnite actually calls it, 
but this car is very very powerful this season not only does it have a lot of hp it can be a lot of decent cover for you like the the smaller cars are harder to use as cover uh, because it's not as large and then also it handles just great off-road a lot of like the sportier cars or the faster cars handle terribly off-road and, and that really limits how you can use it and how you can play off of it but the suv handles perfectly off-road it's a good amount of cover and, and you can use it to get around the map quickly and not only are you going to be getting around the map quickly you're going to be getting around the map more safely because while you're in the car it's much harder for players to snipe you if the windows in your car are shot out they can snipe you but even then it's a harder shot to hit than if you're just walking around out in the open with how good snipers are this season really want to limit the times i'm walking around you know to and from an area and then also i want to limit the times i don't have cover and the car is going to limit how much you're walking around and it's also going to be mobile cover that you can use at any time um, you can kind of drive around get out of it peek from right shoulder the back side of it throw out some snipes get back in the car and maybe push some people i think playing around cars is going to be huge this season also if you're in any sort of close range fight with the car you can kind of get in and out of the car to really throw your opponent's aim off like maybe shoot a shotgun shot or two get back in the car drive it a bit reposition get out again and peek from the right there's just a lot of ways you can use cars this season and i think using them properly is going to be a huge part of the meta of this season because of how good they are and because of how good things like the snipers are and how open this map can be at certain times another you know huge problem that like i myself have lost to this as well because i tend to play aggressive and try to you know get high kill games is going to be getting two tunnel vision on the medallion players and what tunnel vision is is when you're focusing on one thing way too much that you're not really thinking about other things or paying attention to other things on the map and with these medallions you see the gold circle on the map and you might be of the mindset like okay there's a medallion player here that's all i need to worry about but a lot of times other players are going to be going for the medallion player as well and the player is not directly in the center of the circle at all times that is a rumor that i've seen people talk about where like they say the size of the circle doesn't matter because the player is always in the center that is not true and it takes a little while for the circle to update where the person is anyways so just don't focus too much on the gold circle assume there's more people there looking to also eliminate the medallion player and if you do that you're probably going to you know put yourself in safer situations to deal with third parties and not get too tunnel vision on the medallion players and then the same could be said of fighting the boss locations if you tunnel vision too much on the boss and not enough on like you know other players in the poi or potential third parties coming in it's going to really decrease your likelihood of surviving in those situations uh the riot shield or uh, the ballistic shield i think is what fortnite calls it is a very controversial item this season and a lot of players i see losing to this item and talking about how overpowered it is they stand out in the open and then they either try to shoot the riot shooter shielder's feet or they shoot the shield to break the block and either of those options are good but the problem is they're standing out in the open you don't want to get into like a damage trade situation with the riot shield if you're behind some sort of cover then sure you can you know spray the shield out break the block maybe spray the feet as well and it's unlikely that you're going to take an absurd amount of damage and then once you do get some tags on them maybe you'll just eliminate them straight up or you'll be able to like go on them and get get up close with your auto shotgun and jump around you don't want to get on them without getting any early tags and you don't want to just be standing out in the open trying to break their block while they spray you with a pistol or trying to spray their feet while they spray you with a pistol get behind cover spray their block out just spray the shield and eventually it'll like stun the person and then you can get a lot of damage on them and then from there you can maybe shockwave onto them and push them with the auto shotgun because when you are up close it can be easy for you to get a few shots on them but i still wouldn't want to do that while the person is full hp if i don't have to that kind of comes back to the point about you know 50 50 with the auto shotgun um, and I, I think if you play like this, it's much easier to deal with the riot shielders. The biggest problem is when it's like end game and there's not much cover in zone and, and then it can be super annoying to deal with the riot shielders for sure. If you have shockwaves in your inventory in situations like that, you can try to just shockwave the shielder away from you into storm or something like that. Uh, but it is definitely preferred to be behind some cover when you're shooting at them because they themselves have cover while you're trying to spray them. You know, uh, another thing I've seen people say is that the attachments aren't very good and it doesn't matter if you're using them and that you just shouldn't worry about it and this can be true it's like you can definitely win games without the attachments but the attachments themselves are a nice bonus like getting less recoil on your assault rifle getting a faster reload uh getting like a faster aim down sight speed with the sniper is huge all of these things can give you an advantage in game so 
I would highly recommend trying to go to the vaults and customize the attachments on your weapons, or at least kind of keep in mind what attachments you have. Uh, angled foregrip on the sniper is personally what I think is the most important. Um, and then things like the drum mags sound good, especially on the auto shotgun, but it makes it take longer for you to reload. So I'd recommend going for the speed mag. And like I said, people say you can win games without it and you certainly can. You can make every mistake on this list and still win games. Like that's just kind of how Fortnite is. It's not like you have to be perfect. Sometimes thing, things happen and you don't get punished for mistakes. But if you want to win as consistently as possible, I think taking advantage of the attachments and customizing your weapons to suit you best is, you know, going to give you an advantage. And that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found this, you know, helpful, informative. Also, if this is one minor thing that I'm sure everybody knows, but if you're struggling to find shield or you're weak at any point, learning where the mending machines are and taking advantage of those to heal yourself and get shield can be a big deal because... It definitely seems harder to get shield on in chapter five at times. Like the spawn rate of heals is just kind of scuffed. Hopefully they fix it sometime in the future. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful, informative, interesting. As always, if you did, remember to give it a like, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below which mistake has been costing you games most. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.